Hello and welcome back, it's Puzzle Time with Sudoku Sleuth and today we're going to be playing good old irregular Squishy Fog. Now, I am really hoping for an approachable puzzle today. Uh, and uh, that's because, you know, yesterday's puzzle, well, I found it quite difficult even though it was a one-star difficulty rated puzzle. And we've got a couple of monster puzzles that are coming up this weekend. So I'm hoping that today's puzzle, which is essentially going to be scheduled for, pardon me, I'm just actually just checking because I'm pre-recording this, for Thursday and then another one for Friday, are going to be highly approachable. Now, this is a one-star difficulty rated puzzle. And at the time of recording, it's got a 94% rating. Now, this particular puzzle, um, I tried to play another one, which is also a squishy puzzle. And... Uh, it just happened to be that I recorded it, but then somebody else posted it on a different channel. And as a result, I just didn't want to give you guys some stale content. So they play really interestingly. And uh, rather than try and explain it, I think it's much better to look at the rule sets and the layout of this grid because it's very different. Now, my attempt here to show what a squishy fog would look like. Somehow there's a bit of fog in this toy room, toy shop where Sleuth is. And he's playing with lots of squishy toys. And uh, some of them are clearly very regular things like teddy bears. Some of them look very strange indeed. I don't even know if I can explain them all. Hence the irregular squishy. Anyway, let's take a look at today's puzzle and rule sets. Uh, really interesting to see what this will bring. So, good old irregular squishy fog by GDC. Now, uh, I'll read the text and then I'm going to try and explain this in a second. Irregular squishy do squish doku so place the digits one to six in every empty cell now digits may not repeat in a row so not in these cells in a column such as this cell or region now if a region border goes to the center of a cell this cell is part of multiple regions right so you'll probably notice that we can't actually place the digits 1 to 6 in every row because there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 cells. Same for every column, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 cells. However, you'll notice that the regions, well, they're not quite regions because the darker, thicker black lines are going through the middle of them. And that's because the entire grid is squished from a 6 by 6 into a 5 by 5. So... When you're essentially trying to think of regions, you have to include the ones where the line is going through them. So this is a three by two region. Here is another three by two region. Here is another three by two region. Here's a very irregular one here and another irregular one. And we'll come back to that X in a second. But essentially that's six, that's another six, that's another six, etc. So the regions are largely 6 by 6 except for this cell, which, as I said, I'll come back to in a second. What else do we have? Uh, so if a region border goes through the center of a cell, this cell is part of multiple regions. I think I've demonstrated this cell, for example, is part of this region, part of this region, and therefore part of this region as well. Uh, not this cell. Sorry, I was just looking for any others that are quite as intense as that one. The grid is mostly covered in fog. Placing correct digits reveals clues in the surroundings three by three areas. So if this cell here was a two, if that was correct, all of these cells that are surrounding it, including itself obviously, will actually be revealed and hopefully will give us some more clues to allow us to progress. I know that you guys are big fans of fog puzzles, so we're back with fog. Then we have this cell marked with an X is a one cell region. This cell. All the other regions, as I demonstrated earlier, are, have six cells. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then all the other three by two or two by three ones. Digits separated by a black dot are in a one to two ratio. So if that cell was two in my example, this would have to be one or four. So that one cell is double the other. Digits separated by a white dot are consecutive and not all possible dots are given. So imagine that this black dot was actually white, then for it to be consecutive, it would have to be one or three, so that, you know, they are consecutive. And last but not least, not all dots are given. So if that happens to be a four, that is clearly a black dot away from the two. That is not an issue. The absence of a black dot 
wouldn't be a problem. Not, not necessarily that there isn't a black dot there under the fog. That's all the rules we have for today. So, if you feel like playing with a bunch of squishy, irregular fog Sudokus, link will be in the description down below for you to do so. And with that said, I'm going to restart the clock and see how I get on. So I'll tell you, the first thing that I'm actually tempted to do is to color. Because I know that if this is purple, blue, green, that these have to be different because they are part of the same setup. So this is, let's say, orange, red. Uh, nope, let's try that again. This is <laughs> yellow, orange, and red. So that's my six colors. I also know that this cell is not purple, blue, or green, or red for that matter, because it's in the same region. It is orange or yellow. And then another cell in here, which is not orange, yellow, or red, or green for that matter, because it's in the same region again, this is blue and purple. And that's already helpful. And the reason I say that's already helpful is I know that this is one, two, four, and this is one, two, four. And the reason I can th say that is if this, so let's just think about the digits one, two, three, one, two, six, and black crocky dots for a second. I could have one, two, I could have T4, and I could have 3, 6. There are no other possibilities. That was a bad setup, 2, 4, and 3, 6. Essentially, the only digit that is not part of any black crocky dots would be the 5. Now, what I see in here is that yellow and orange make one set, and then yellow slash orange with a blue slash purple make another set. But importantly, one of these cells is here. So if this is 3, 6, that would be 3, 6, and then that would be repeating a 3, 6. Let me show you. And then I've broken the puzzle. So the only way this would work is essentially that this is 1, 2, 4 with a definite 2. This is 1, 2, 4 with a definite 2. And now we've got our first digit. Uh, that's not what I meant to do. That is definitely a 2. And the reveal of the fog there tells us we're on the right track. This is a 1, 2, 4 triplet. This is clearly going to be a 3, 6 pair, or another way of thinking about it, because there are no 2s in these two cells. This can only be 3, 6, because 1, 2, and 2, 4 are both not available. Now, this cell here can also be red, so I don't know if I want to color it. This is three options. It's either orange-yellow, the other orange-yellow, or red. So... Uh, not brilliant. Yeah, not brilliant. I'm not going to do that. Did I just say I'm not going to do that and then re remove the digits, not the colors? I think that's what happened. Right. Where do we go from here? So essentially, this one four is in one of these two cells. And then the remaining cells are three, five, six. In particular, these two cells are in fact three, five, six, because the one four is somewhere in here. Then I have another one four and another three, five, six, and I don't know how to know which is which, actually. Kind of. This cell sees one, two, and four, so this is another three, five, six. This is another one four. Interesting. This 356, so in here is another 14 that is not part of this 12, and then another 356 that is not these two cells. Um, how do I know which color is which? I'm not actually sure. Because essentially, all right, let's think about this, let's think about this. Blue and purple. So this is not green, or red, or orange, or yellow. This is blue or purple. Right. So this is the two blue purples covered. This is the 1, 4, 3, 5, 6 option. And therefore, this is not blue, purple. This is blue, purple. This is blue, purple. This is orange, yellow, essentially one of these cells. 
And then in here, I have green, purple. Just again, I've got all of these three, and I can see the blue. So it can only be one of these two cells that need to be inside this region. And then same logic again, and purple all see this cell, so this is blue or green. And then essentially I have this triplet of blue, green, yellow in here. Then the other orange, yellow. And where am I going with this? This is not 1, 4, because one of these cells is 1, 4, which will be in here. Yeah. And this is not 2. So now these are 2 because we already placed it. So this could be two. It's not one, four. It is possibly two. It's not three. It's not six. This could also be a five, can't it? I think it can. And then these are one, two, four. Where is it all leading? I'm like, I don't feel like I have a, much of a plan. I'm just seeing what's going on. And these are three, five, six. That gives me a digit right there. Three, six. That can't be three, six. Sorry. So the rest of this column, I've placed one, two, and four. I have two of these remaining digits in this column, three, five, six. That's a three, six. That's a five. That is not a five. That gives me a two. That removes a two. So this is now either one, two. I mean, so the one is not available because that would have to be a two. So one, two, and the four doesn't work. So that's one. That's two. Lovely. Incredibly, it hasn't actually given me any colors. This is the remaining digit four in this region. These are two, three, six. That can't be a two because it's in the same region. That gives me three, six pair. So essentially, I have two, three, six in this bottom region, and therefore, this is one, four, five. That is not a four. That's about it. Right, where am I going next? I feel like I really need to sort out some of these colors and I, I just need to spot something that would allow me to make a bit of a breakthrough here. So where am I going with this? So I know that one of these is one, four. I know one of these is three, five, six. Question is, which is it? And the same thing, one, four and three, five, six. And so I have to have a green. In fact, the three, five, six now, because this cell is not known. So I'll finish that thought. Essentially, one of these cells is three, five, six. And then the other one is one four. So I was just trying to see if I can force this at all, and I'm not sure I can. Um, clearly, something about the regions I'm not quite spotting. I need to think through. So, what is this cell? It's not red. It's not one. It's not. Yeah, so it could be the green 356 or the purple slash blue 356. This is interesting. Why? It tells me that the five is either the green. No, I don't even have to have a five in this row, do I? No, I don't. Where are you going with all of this sleuth? What's going on here? The white crop kid out teacher. How can you not see this? Which two cells are connected here? Two, three, six. Not two is two. So yellow is two. Purple, orange is one, four. So that's not yellow. That is yellow. The consecutive cell, that has to be a four. If it's a one, that would be a two, and it, it absolutely is not. So that is a four, that's a four, that's a one. The four has to be connected to three or five. 
and therefore the 1 has to be the purple. So that's purple. This is not purple, that's 3, 5, it can't be a 6. And we need a 1 in here, and that's the 1. That's purple. And this is 3, 5, 6. In fact, more specifically, hang on. Uh, it is green, 3, 5, 6. If I can type. Okay, and not a 3 because of this. What did I do here? Yeah, nothing. That's not a 3 because of this 3. Not a 1, not a 1. This is a 4, 5 pair. That is a 1. Right. 3 and 5. Uh, we've, I'm sure we've got this. Come on. That is not a 3. Therefore, that is not a 3. One of these has to be a 3. And one of these has to be a 6. four, five. Uh, I'm really struggling with simple scanning recently. I don't know what's going on. And six and five and five. And if I've not made any mistakes, six for the finish. Well, it is a simple puzzle, kind of what I exactly was hoping for with an 11 minute finish. Uh, just use Sudoku more, Sleuth, and uh, you would be able to solve it quicker. And I imagine you guys absolutely would have, you know, smashed this particular puzzle. Hope that you guys enjoyed it as well as the video and see you back for the next one. Bye-bye for now.